now. 63% of Australians are either overweight or obese. I think that America's not far behind. And I say far behind because I know that Australia has taken over America. And I go to the little town of Loveland. I have to tell you, I think that they're bigger, bigger than our big. <laughs> very large people in, in those little towns. And it's the high carbohydrate diet that many people are eating today. Hello, I'm Barbara O'Neill, and today we're diving into the secrets of weight loss without needing to hit the gym. Have you been struggling with being overweight and dealing with the health issues that come with it? Well, that may be a thing of the past. In this video, I'm going to share my secrets to achieving a healthy body weight. And trust me, it's not about spending hours at the gym. But don't just take my word for it. We will look at the inspiring story of a retired judge who managed to lose an incredible 70 kilos, all without a single workout. As a thank you for joining me today, we're giving away 100 free copies of my best-selling book to subscribers. So if you haven't yet, hit subscribe, like this video, and comment why you want to win. So I'll give you the story of Henry to show you what he did. He was a retired judge. He came to our health retreat a few years ago now. He was, I think, 69, and he was on six medication. He was on medication for heart, for high blood pressure, for blood thinning, for blood cholesterol, for blood sugar, for gout, and for stomach ulcers. So he was on six medications. I said, are you interested in stopping your medication? He said, no, I'm very happy with my medication. Thank you very much. I always respect everyone's right for what they choose to put into their body, and shouldn't we? It's our God-given right. But we gave him Hawthorne berry tea a day. We gave him a litre to drink through the day. It's not an unpleasant tea. We also gave him a little cane pepper. He was happy for us to try a few things. He took the herbs with him when he went home. He, he, uh, he rang me four months later. He said, Barbara, I'd like to visit you and get a few more Hawthorne berries. I said, come for lunch, Henry. Now, when I opened the door, I did not recognize Henry. He had lost 20 kilos in four months. What's that, 40 pound? He said, I can close, I can do my coat up now. All the puffiness had gone out of his face. He said, I've got a few stories for you. He said, I went to the doctor recently to have my blood pressure taken, and the doctor stood up and left the room. He said, where are you going? He said, the machine's broken. Henry said, why do you say that? He said, well, your blood pressure is 160 on 95. Did you hear that? That's on medication. He said, this machine says your blood pressure is 120 on 80. It must be broken. Henry said, that's my blood pressure now. The doctor took him off all his medication because his blood thinning's normal, his blood cholesterol's normal, his blood sugars are normal, his blood pressure's normal. He has no more gout and... He does not have stomach ulcers anymore. I think this is an incredible story because remember what Henry did? Henry went home on all his medication. Who took him off his meds? His doctor. Because if the doctor didn't take him off his meds, his blood pressure would go too low, his blood thinning would go too low, he'd start bruising all over the place because drugs come in and say, get out of my way, I've got a job to do whether you need it or not. Not the herbs. The herbs work with the needs of the body. I said, tell me what you have for breakfast, Henry. He said, I have a spaghetti bowl of whole grain. You know, I usually cook some millet or rice or buckwheat. I have fruit. I have coconut cream. Did you hear that? Uh, 40 kilos lost on coconut cream. He said, I have chia seed and the ground flax, and I have a slice of sourdough spelt toast with avocado and tomato. That's not a light meal, is it? He said, I don't eat until, until lunch. He said, I have big salad, I have steamed vegetables, I have some sort of legume protein, and I might have another slice of sourdough spelt toast with avocado and tomato. And he said, and I do not eat again until breakfast. Very decisive man. So he lost 40 pound on that diet? That's not a light diet. I said, tell me about your exercise program, Henry. He said, I find I can walk another block every week. 
as he gets smaller, as his muscles get stronger, as his heart gets stronger, he can go further, less effort and less time. He wrote a letter to me, he's of the old school, writing letters. He wrote a letter to me a year later. He said, 38 kilos lost. So what's that, nearly, nearly 40 kilo? That's nearly 80 pound. Ooh. Incredible story of an incredible body that we live in that has an inbuilt ability to heal itself. Henry's diet is a prime example of how balanced nutrition can promote weight loss. A diet focused on whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and healthy fats can be an effective way to support weight loss. Whole grains such as millet and buckwheat are rich in fiber. Fiber helps you feel full and satisfied, which can reduce the urge to snack or overeat later in the day. Additionally, fiber slows down digestion and helps stabilize blood sugar levels, preventing those energy crashes that often lead to cravings. Including healthy fats from sources like coconut cream and avocado is also beneficial. These fats provide essential nutrients and keep you feeling satisfied, which can help control hunger. Healthy fats support hormonal balance, playing a key role in metabolism and energy regulation. Fruits and vegetables are low in calories, but high in volume and nutrients. They add bulk to meals without significantly increasing caloric intake, making it easier to eat satisfying portions. Their high water content contributes to hydration and fullness, helping you stick to your dietary goals. Legumes rich in protein and fiber are another important aspect of this diet. Protein helps boost metabolism and preserves muscle mass during weight loss. Maintaining muscle is important because muscle burns more calories than fat, even at rest. So bread, bread is very common. Cereal, there's a whole aisle devoted to cereal. And many people having bread and cereal for breakfast by mid-morning, they're wanting something else. So they reach for, and we're just gonna say cakes, etc. because if we say everything, um, there's not enough room on the board for it. When you go into muffins and croissants and donuts and pasties and pies and pastry, etc., etc., etc. So we're just going to put etc. Also, uh, pasta. I'm a fifth generation Australian Scottish descent. I didn't know what pasta and pizza was till I was about 18. So what did I grow up with? Sausages or chops, mashed potatoes, frozen peas or beans every single night of the week except for Sunday when mum would do a roast lamb. And everyone I knew ate like that. Our relatives ate like that, the neighbours ate like that. As a fifth generation Australian, I grew up in a little Presbyterian church. Everyone in the church ate like that. I came to the conclusion as a child that everyone in the whole world ate like that, but it's not quite true, is it? And when I was about 16, I had a boyfriend who was about 19, and he had a friend who was a vegetarian. I'd never heard of such a thing. <laughs> I'd actually didn't, had never even heard of brown bread. So this was real traditional Australian. Rice, I'd never had rice. I don't think I went to a Chinese restaurant till I was about 18, and that's the first time I ate rice. <laughs> potatoes, well, we ate potatoes every meal. And last and certainly least in nutritive value is the pure crystallised acid extracted from the sugarcane plant. And as we have looked at this, we've also acknowledged that I don't think anyone chose to eat that way. It's just fast. It's just there. And we're such a fast society today. Here it is. And we showed how when all of these things break down in the body, they break down to the singular structure of glucose. A high carbohydrate diet can lead to weight gain, primarily due to the way the body processes and stores the carbohydrates, especially when consumed in excess. Most carbohydrates, whether from bread, pasta or sugary snacks, are broken down into glucose, a simple sugar that serves as the body's primary energy source. When you eat carbohydrates, the digestive system converts them into glucose, which then enters the bloodstream. This process causes a spike in blood sugar levels, prompting the pancreas to release insulin, a hormone that helps regulate blood sugar. 
Insulin's job is to transport glucose from the blood into the cells, where it can be used for energy or stored for later use. However, when you consume more carbohydrates than your body needs for immediate energy, insulin helps store the excess glucose in the liver and muscles in the form of glycogen. Here's where weight gain starts to come into play. The body can only store a limited amount of glycogen. Once the glycogen stores are full, any additional glucose is converted into fat through a process called lipogenesis. This fat is then stored in adipose tissue, fat cells, leading to an increase in body fat and consequently weight gain. Additionally, a high carb diet can cause frequent blood sugar spikes, which lead to increased insulin production. Over time, consistently high insulin levels can cause cells to become resistant to insulin's effects. This condition, known as insulin resistance, can make it harder for the body to control blood sugar, leading to more fat storage and further weight gain. Carbohydrates also tend to be less filling than protein or fat, which means they can lead to overeating. Foods high in refined carbohydrates like white bread, pastries and sugary drinks are rapidly digested, causing a quick rise in blood sugar followed by a sharp drop. This sudden drop can leave you feeling hungry again, often prompting you to eat more, creating a cycle that can lead to overconsumption of calories and further fat storage. When we put food in our stomach, we should now leave it. Let it do its work. After about an hour and a half, two hours, start sipping on some water. Then you don't water down your hydrochloric acid. It takes three and a half to four hours to digest a meal. If a person has a meal of watermelon, that's probably gone in about two hours. <laughs> but when someone has a balanced meal, which is shown here, it takes about three and a half to four hours to digest. And then the stomach loves a one hour rest. Let your stomach have a rest between meals. <coughs> and in that rest time, it has time to revive and restore and replace the digestive enzymes it used at the last meal. And that's why the time-restricted eating, we've talked about this a couple of times, time-restricted eating is basically a modern name for this. Time-restricted eating it's from the uh, intermittent fasting, the 5-2 diet. A lot of people are familiar with that. Dr. Michael Mosley, in his book Fast Diet, he goes into the, into the research showing why this is so effective. It's eating twice in a 24-hour period. They suggest eating a large meal at 1 and another meal at 7. But I was talking to one girl and she said, I'm fading by 10 in the morning. And she said, and I can't sleep at night because I've got so much food in my stomach. <laughs> when we go to sleep, our stomach wants to sleep. So it's far superior to go back to the old adage that's been around for so many years, probably hundreds of years, that we eat breakfast as our main meal, that we have a main meal in the middle of the day, and then if anything's eaten at night, make it very light. Now, if if a, if a worker has a breakfast at 6 a.m. and then has a meal at 12 o'clock, they may need something at night. But if they have the meal at 8 and at 2 or at 9 and at 3, then it's very easy not to eat at night. So you've just got to work out what works for you. One lady said to me, she said, I give my children a really substantial breakfast and we'll look at uh, illustration of meals in a minute. Should I give them a really substantial breakfast? She said, I just give them an orange for lunch. And she said, and when they come home at 3.30, and by the way, how much lunch do kids eat at school? They just want to play, don't they? So she gives them something light. And when they get home, they're hungry. How many kids get home hungry and want to eat? And then they're not wanting to eat their evening meal and it's too late anyway. So she said, when I see that school bus come, she said, I've got the table set. The kids come in, they're hungry and have the meal there. She said, it works so well. She said, they never used to eat much at night because they had so much when they got home from school. But husband doesn't come home till maybe five or six. And often he wants quiet. So he's very happy to just eat quietly by himself. <laughs> 
And maybe the lady who wants to lose weight, she'll sit with her husband and drink a peppermint tea, or maybe she'll just have a bowl of salad. One lady said, but Barbara, that's when my family's together. My teenagers, my husband. I said, well, just make it a lighter meal. Make it soup. <laughs> make it a bowl of soup, soup and crackers. Crackers digest easily, much easier than bread. Eating large meals at night, especially when your body doesn't need the extra energy, can contribute significantly to weight gain. At night, your body's energy demands are much lower than during the day when you are more active. When you consume a big dinner, your body processes the food in a similar way to any other meal, breaking it down into glucose for immediate energy or storing it for later use. However, because the energy demand is lower at night, the excess glucose is more likely to be stored as fat. Here's how it works. After eating a large meal, the digestive system breaks down carbohydrates into glucose, which enters the bloodstream, causing a rise in blood sugar levels. In response, your pancreas releases insulin, the hormone that helps move glucose from the blood into your cells for energy. Since your body doesn't need much energy at night, most of this glucose is stored as glycogen in the liver and muscles. However, when glycogen stores are full, the excess glucose is converted into fat and stored in fat cells, leading to weight gain over time. Additionally, eating late at night can disrupt the body's natural circadian rhythms, which are closely tied to metabolism. At night, your body's metabolism slows down, meaning food is processed more slowly. This slower metabolism makes it more likely that the calories from a large meal will be stored as fat rather than burned off for energy. Moreover, consuming large meals late in the evening can also increase insulin levels for longer periods, which can encourage fat storage. Another factor to consider is that after a large dinner, you're likely to be less active. Many people relax or go to bed shortly after eating, meaning the body doesn't have a chance to burn off any of the excess calories consumed. This lack of physical activity contributes further to weight gain because there's no energy expenditure to balance out the intake from the large meal. In contrast, eating smaller, lighter meals at night ensures that you consume only the calories you need and reduce the likelihood of storing extra energy as fat. This approach aligns with your body's natural rhythms, promoting better digestion and reducing the chances of overeating. By eating lighter in the evening, you can help manage weight more effectively and prevent unnecessary fat storage. And this is what he's, this is his story, Dr. Atkins. He said he was a GP, uh, late 40s, putting on a bit of excess weight. He knew his science. He knew that carbohydrates stored as fat. So he decided to do an experiment on himself. He decided to stop all carbohydrates. And he theorized that if he stopped all carbohydrates, his body would start to live on his fat stores. So what did he eat? He chose foods that had no carbohydrate. So his diet was uh, high in protein, meat, butter, cream, cheese, eggs, that's a lot of protein. Fat, meat, butter, cream, cheese, eggs, that's a lot. But something else surprised me that you never hear about. He ate three cups of vegetables a day and one cup had to be greens. And so there was the fibre. The weight just fell off him. He theorised right. He wasn't giving carbohydrates to his body, so, well, hardly any, a little bit in the vegetables. So his body started to live on his fat stores. The, the weight started to drop off him. He was never hungry because these are the three foods that give the, give the feeling of satiation, satisfaction. <laughs> he had lots of energy because your liver can convert protein and fat to glucose if it needs it, and it can break down your fat stores to give you glucose. It's called gluc gluconeogenesis, creating glucose from the fat stores. Has he found the perfect diet? Never hungry, uh, lots of energy, weight's falling off him, so he started to put some of his patients on this. It is estimated that 11 million people were helped by his diet. His book was number one on the New York Times best-selling book list, four years running. This guy demands some attention. 
But the problem is that after a while, some of his patients were developing uh, arthritis because this is a high acid food. In fact, I had a man come to me wanting a consultation when I was in New York a few years ago. He said, I used to be one of Dr. Atkins' patients. He said, I'm a, I'm a vegetarian, I'm an Adventist, but I was getting overweight, I was getting diabetes, heart disease, so I went to Dr. Atkins, because he's a very famous doctor. And Dr. Atkins, he said, was a very gracious man. He said, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to stop this high carbohydrate diet. So he said, I started eating meat. I didn't eat a lot. I had a lot of vegetables. He said, I didn't get diabetes. He said, my heart problems all resolved. He said, the weight dropped. But he said, I'm getting arthritis. And he said, you are the first nutritionist that hasn't totally slammed Atkins. I'm interested. I said, well, Atkins' theory was correct. <coughs> it's, it's what I have shown you today. But what you can do, you can do superior to Atkins. You can do the plant proteins. You can do the plant fats. Dr. Atkins, on his first stage, he got people down to 20 grams of, protein, of uh, starch carbohydrates a day. Do you know there's no need to go that low? All you need to do is greatly reduce the carbohydrates, ideally stop the wheat, eat more vegetables, eat more legumes, nuts and seeds, and you can get a similar result. Dr. Atkins' diet focuses on significantly reducing carbohydrate intake, which triggers a process in the body known as ketosis. When carbohydrates are drastically limited, the body is forced to switch from using glucose, sugar, as its primary energy source to burning stored fat for fuel. Normally, carbohydrates are broken down into glucose, which provides quick energy. However, when you stop consuming carbohydrates, the body turns to fat stores, breaking them down into ketones, which then supply energy. In Atkins's diet, foods like meat, eggs, cheese, butter, and cream are high in protein and fat, but contain little to no carbohydrates. These macronutrients help with satiety, meaning people feel fuller for longer periods, which naturally reduces overall calorie intake without the constant feeling of hunger. High protein foods in particular promote a feeling of fullness and prevent overeating. Moreover, protein requires more energy to digest compared to fats and carbohydrates, leading to a slight boost in calorie expenditure through digestion. By including low-carb vegetables, Atkins also ensures the body receives fibre, which is essential for digestive health. Fibre also aids in feeling full without adding extra calories. Vegetables contain minimal carbohydrates, allowing the body to remain in ketosis. As the body burns fat stores for energy, weight loss tends to happen more rapidly in the early stages of the diet. People can see visible reductions in body fat while maintaining lean muscle mass, thanks to the high protein intake. This shift in the body's metabolism allows for consistent weight loss without the typical fatigue and hunger that come with low calorie diets. Thanks for watching. I hope you found these weight loss secrets inspiring and that they empower you to take charge of your health. Remember, you don't need a rigorous workout routine to achieve your goals. Sometimes small lifestyle changes can lead to remarkable results. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe for more health tips and inspiring stories. Until next time, take care and embrace your journey toward a healthier you.